my name is Kaylin, and I was the team lead this semester for the Student Research Symposium Public Relations Campaign. First, we would like to thank you all for coming out and supporting us as we go through and present the four stages of our campaign that we worked extremely hard on throughout the whole semester to make happen. We will begin with the first stage of our campaign, research. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly. There's a lot of students here at SCSU, about 33,000 approximately, with 160 majors and minors. Now, how many of the students actually know about the SRS? Well, that's where research comes in, and I promise research can also be interesting and fun, too. So we have three audiences, SEC students and faculty, as well as the surrounding San Diego community. Although our secondary research provides that SCSU is one of the best students to faculty ratios in the country. Although SCSU SRS has been around for nine years, a lot of students actually still don't know about it. That's where we come in. We want to increase participation and awareness among SCSU faculty and SCSU community as a whole. So now we're going to talk about all the factors that we did to implement and promote research on campus as well as the quantity of surveys, the competitor analysis, analysis that we did, focus group, and also six in-depth interviews that we did with, our, with call, uh, faculty members at every, every each different college. And now Joaquin's going to talk about our competitor analysis that we did. Hi, I'm Joaquin. Uh, we use research to set the tone for our campaign. Uh, we develop a multi-layered uh, layered narrative targeting traditional and social media at local universities, um, uh, California universities, and Ivy League schools. The research suggests that we were the only school that had a similar program that actually was proactive in uh, promoting the campaign. Hi, I'm Carlos. As Kelly had mentioned before, we talked to six faculty members. Uh, with six uh, in-depth interviews, what we wanted to find out were some of the factors that affect their participation in SRS. One of the biggest roadblocks of their participation, as you can see up there, was lack of time. They also found the deadline to meet the SRS requirements a bit challenging. That, coupled with lack of interest, was one of the biggest factors that kept them from participating. They also felt that the SRS didn't apply to their particular field of research. Lastly, they also experienced a lack of students coming up and seeking mentorship out of them. And there were also several other research events co coinciding during the SRS that kept them from participating. Kalika? Hi, I'm Kalika. So part of our research is we conducted focus groups with students from five of the different colleges on campus. During those focus groups, we actually found that our public of the students were latent in their knowledge of the SRS. Only one student was aware of SRS and kind of what it offered, but none of them were active in our group. We also found that um, students wanted to know what they were personally going to get out of SRS. They wanted to know how they were going to benefit, they wanted to know how they were going to get a job out of it, and they wanted to know where it would get them in life. Hi, I'm Cassie, and to supplement this rich qualitative data that we gathered from the depth interviews and the focus groups, we also wanted to conduct a questionnaire for faculty and students that would be our measurement for the implementation of our campaign to see if we reached our goals and objectives. So what we found before our campaign started was that students in particular did not have high levels of knowledge regarding the SRS, which we discussed from our focus groups and the depth interviews. But interestingly, what we found was that attitude was high for the SRS for both faculty and students. So despite their lack of knowledge, they did seem to have some positive attitudes about the event. And then finally, we looked at behavior. And for behavior, both faculty and students had low levels of behavior for the SRS, which meant they weren't willing to participate. Hello, I'm Vanessa. And based on the research findings that we had conducted, we came up with some pre-campaign recommendations. The first one had to do with students that were interested in the SRS. Uh, we felt that they would be more likely to attend the SRS event if they had schedules uh, so that they could actually fit it into their schedules based on the research that they found interest in. The second recommendation is for a SRS kind of fair prior, that would be held prior to the SRS event and it would consist of a literature table that would inform the publics about the happenings at the SRS and also play a reflection video um, from previous years. The third recommendation came from faculty and it was a um, kind of a schedule tailored to each specific school of students that would be presenting from those schools so that these professors can go and support their students at the SRS event in the following years. 
Hi, I'm Maggie. So then we did a SWOT analysis just about SRS. So the internal strengths we found were that SRS is the only type of event at SDSU that is very inclusive to all types of students and also all different types of research. Next thing is that we also had a thousand dollar promotional budget, thanks to you guys, <laughs> which allowed us to do a lot more things with it. Lastly, the, the judges were, we had a higher morale from the judges. So they participated, they were excited about the event, which made us really excited about the event too. So in our, I mean, the internal weaknesses we found were that there was just lack of communication between students, faculty, community members about exactly like what participation requirements were for the SRS and also what exactly the SRS entails. Another weakness is that um, the website had some various issues such as broken links and um, outdated information. The program was on there so it made it really hard for people to actually like know like what the SRS was supposed to be about like on the website and you know students like us we use like online stuff to like do some research. <laughs> Lastly, um, there's other popular events coinciding with the SRS that we did. Hello everyone, I'm Shawnee and I'm going to talk about our external opportunities and threats. So we have over 30,000 students on this campus so one of our opportunities first was that we have a lot of increased participation. We have a lot of opportunity for participation with 30,000 students. Another opportunity was that interested media outlets from previous years um, would come back this year or spread the word to other media outlets. Our third opportunity was based off last year's social media, we were able to um, critique our strengths and weaknesses and improve it this year. Some of our threats was the audience's limited availability because the event was um, on a Friday and a Saturday. The Saturday event had less attendees probably because other um, attendees were, weren't able to be available because of prior um, commitments. Um, another external threat was the preconception of research. Many people think that the SRS is just science-based when really it's from science to performing arts and craft theater. Hi everyone, I'm Marion, and over the course of our campaign, we had three overarching goals that we worked to achieve. The first goal was that we wanted to um, increase attendance at the SRS. We wanted to address our target audiences and have them come to the event and be engaged and involved with it. The second goal that we had over the course of our campaign was to educate the SDSU community about what exactly the SRS was, what it entailed, and everything about it. Through our research, we found that many SDSU students, faculty, and staff weren't exactly aware of what exactly the SRS entailed, if they knew anything about it at all. And the last goal that we had was to highlight the content diversity of the SRS. We wanted our students, faculty, staff, and community members to understand that the SRS was an all-inclusive event, inclusive of all class levels and majors, and that it wasn't strictly a science-based research symposium. Hi, Carlos again. So the unifying theme to our messaging was step up your research game. Now, I don't know about you, but almost every conversation I have regarding SDSU almost always revolves around basketball. People know we're a pretty good basketball school. <laughs> but what bothered me is that a lot of people really didn't know that we're one of the top-ranked research institutions in the country. We wanted to change that. We wanted people to feel the excitement that they felt towards SDSU basketball. We wanted that to transpire over to our academic ballers, as it were. <laughs> Stephanie. Hi, I'm Stephanie. So, like Carlos said, we took this idea of step up your academic game and we developed messaging around it that targeted three very specific audiences. And I'm going to be talking about the first target audience that we identified, which is SDSU students, and more specifically, latent and aware SDSU students. So, latent students would be any student who may not know what SRS is so they don't attend it, or who may be working on research of their own but they don't know about SRS, so they don't really have means to present their research. Um, and aware SDSU students may be students who know about SRS and are attending it, but may, may not be planning on staying for more than just their friend's presentation. So we came up with three main messaging points um, for this target audience. And the first is that SRS is a non-committal research environment. So you can stay all day long visit however many of the 551 presentations that you want to visit and leave with a full day's worth of knowledge or you can stay for 10 minutes, visit a couple presentations that fit your interests and even then leave with knowledge and it's totally up to you, it's very flexible and we thought 
that would be great for an SDSU student who may not have time to devote a full day to a research, this research symposium. And the second um, point is that students who present research at SRS will be feature, or future leaders in their industries one day. Um, and since these students are academic MVPs, um, it, supporting them and cheering them on at the symposium would make you a part of history as well. And the third message that we created was that the Student Research Symposium, since it consists of 551 presentations, that's how many entries there were in this past symposium, it's not very hard to find something that interests you, regardless of your major. You can find anything from biology to dance, like Shawnee said, and so there will be something that will fit your niche interests. And I'll pass it off to Beth. Hi everyone, I'm Becca, and the next audience that we targeted was SDSU faculty. So this audience includes all faculty members who are not mentoring a student participating in the SRS, who are interested in fulfilling their service requirement, who are relatively new to SDSU and maybe don't have a sense of the research culture that SDSU provides, and those who are interested in mentoring a student for next year's SRS. So the key messages that we came up with for, with, for this specific audience was put a full court press on enhancing your <coughs> career, what you see and hear at the SRS can help you get your student to be a number one seed in their field. Learn how your students can impress at next year's SRS. Have pride that SDSU is a top public research institution and show support to the students in your college. Our third and final uh, messaging tactic was towards the San Diego community. We wanted to show the community that SDSU is a top ranked uh, research institution and we're not just about basketball. We came up with three points, and one was that we're a top-ranked research institution. Our second point was, your support brings more opportunities to SDSU and the rest of the San Diego community. And our third point was that, come to SRS and discover the innovative research SDSU students are doing that impacts our communities, and this will affect all of us in the future. Hello everyone, I'm Kelly Hilloff, the team lead for publicity. So we took all of our team's <coughs> messaging points and synthesized it all into several, several press releases that we then sent out to media organizations. Our strategy for publicity was to target local and hyper-local media organizations in San Diego County. As you can see, we have three of our earned media placements on the screen. CBS 8 did a video package that aired on their evening edition. This piece was actually syndicated through Yahoo News and republished on their site, which increased our viewership. Additionally, the Union Tribune San Diego published a piece both in print on and online. And finally, the Daily Aztec, SDSU's on-campus news organization, published two pieces, both print and online, pre-event coverage and post-event coverage. So in addition to our vigorous media outreach strategy, we also focused internally and focused on our own media which Zoe is going to talk about our social media strategy. Hi everyone, I'm Zoe. So as Kelly said, we also utilize social media to further publicize the Student Research Symposium. We use three channels, including Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We created a social media content calendar where we would schedule out the posts that we would be posting on each of these channels for each day um, for a seven day duration. We also, um, and we stayed very consistent with our campaign's messaging, and we also implemented two hashtags, which were hashtag SRS and hashtag AztecsR. We also encouraged people attending the event to use these hashtags on their own photos that they would be, that they would be posting on their own social media sites. And here are just a few of the examples of the posts. Hi everybody, I'm Emily and I headed the graphics team. So what we did with our graphics is we wanted to stay really consistent with the SDSU colors. So SRS was associated with SDSU, so we used shades of red, black, and white throughout all of our graphics that we created. And on all of our social media graphics, we stayed consistent, well not all, but mostly, most all of our social media graphics, we stayed consistent with our um, game theme. So we um, featured basketball, poker, just various games, and we created most of our graphics using Canva or PicTouch. Hello, Vanessa again. So our tactics were a key component in our campaign strategy. Our team created several tactics and also applied several PR theories with those tactics in three different stages they were implemented uh, prior to the SRS, during the SRS, and after the SRS event. 
So what we really hoped to accomplish with these tactics was our latent audience, we really wanted to inform them about what the SRS consisted of. Uh, we also wanted to get that latent audience as well as any aware um, publics that may have known about the SRS event but maybe never attended before, we wanted to get them to actually go to the event. And lastly, uh, we wanted to give all of our publics a better understanding of what kind of research they can expect at the SRS event. So we implemented seven of our tactics that we had proposed, and the first one that I will discuss is the Step Up Your Research Game event. This was done the Thursday prior to the SRS. It was at the SDSU Farmers Market. We had a literature table that had information about the SRS event, and also a flyer <coughs> for our poker run. In addition to that, we had the large Jenga game, and students and faculty members and any publics that passed by were able to sign up and play the game with us if they pulled a block that said SDSU, research, or SRS, they were able to win a prize. Hello again. Um, so our second tactic was easily one of our most popular tactics, and that was the SRS photo booth, which is pictured on top over here. So what we did was we assembled a photo booth complete with a backdrop, a red carpet, and some research-themed props like glasses and monocles, and we put that right outside of Montezuma Hall, where the SRS was taking place on um, the main uh, location for the SRS and we encouraged participants and attendees to stop by and take a picture with the photo booth or at, at the photo booth um, just to document their experience at SRS and then we of course encouraged them to post it on social media using our hashtags which were AztecsR and SRS and this generated a lot of really uh, awesome social media posts and just really great visuals and we we're very happy with how it turned out and then our third tactic was called the poker run and the point of this tactic was to encourage attendees to stay longer than just one presentation and to really engage with the presentations and actually learn things. So what we did was we gave participants a sheet and then we asked them to go up into the symposium and either wa watch five <laughs> presentations, look at five posters or a combination of the two, write down the name of that presentation and one fun fact that, that they learned and then they would bring it back down to us and we would enter them in a drawing to win a $50 OG's gift card. And this was very similar to a tactic that last year's SRS campaign team used called the Passport and we just kind of reworked it and resynthesized it and named it Poker Run to fit into our game theme. The fourth tactic that we used during the campaign was the literature table. So the literature table kind of served as the information hub of the SRS. So we had two representatives from the SRS team present at the table at all times to answer any questions anybody may have about the SRS and kind of help direct them to a specific room they were going to or to help direct them to registration. And the literature table was also <coughs> where people were able to turn in their poker end sheets to be entered into the drawing for the gift card like Stephanie mentioned. Hi again. Kelly. So our first tactic that we actually implemented is called the Teacher Scholar Model Apple, as you see pictured right here. So we had two members of our research team go out to the faculty offices and we handed them apples with little tags that read, hey, these are your student presentations from your college. We really want to increase awareness and show professor student support about the SRS. And it proved to be really positive. A lot of professors showed up and the professor even tweeted about the apple and how he was going to show up because of the presentations. Hi again. So our last two tactics were our social media, er, our publicity efforts that me and Kelly both touched upon earlier. Um, the eighth one being the social media campaign, and the tenth being the um, our outreach to the media, where we um, targeted local media and ended up securing multiple press placements. Hi again. So after weeks of rigorous implementation, it was time to finally measure, did we have an impact? Did we increase attendance? Did we increase knowledge, attitude, and behavior? And so how we did that is we did that with two instruments. We used a content analysis to measure the traditional media and the social media outreach. And then we also administered another questionnaire to students and faculty to measure if we increased the knowledge, attitude, and behavior. <laughs> So to answer the question, yes, we actually did move the needle quite a bit, actually. Total post-campaign content analysis, we found that our page likes on Facebook increased by 35% and our overall engagement increased by 146%.
So looking at the Coast County survey that we also conducted through a method of Qualtrics survey through our faculty, the overall knowledge of SRI, SRS increased by 6%, surpassing our objective, and the overall attitude towards SRI increased by 5.5%, surpassing our objective as well. The post-campaign survey was conducted through a mall intercept method, the same way that we did the pre-campaign pre surveys through students. We literally stood outside the library and around campus and walked up to students, serving them about SRS. And the post-campaign survey for the faculty, like I said, was conducted through Qualtrics and sent through email messaging to the faculties. So total media outreach in the end, we had more than 1.8 million potential impressions for <coughs> SRS content. We actually surpassed our potential impressions by 674%. Mathematically speaking, we not only met our goal of increasing social media engagement by 5%, we pretty much killed it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So looking at our post-campaign recommendations, we have a couple. Um, the first one was that we decided that we wanted to move the event from uh, to a Thursday and Friday schedule because a lot of students, it wasn't as popular for the Saturday schedule for students. The other recommendation was that a more precise signage would be recommended for everyone to kind of see the SRS and find where the SRS was. The poker run should be renamed to a more inviting title such as bingo. And if it is decided to stick with the poker run, it's suggested that we shorten from five presentations to three. Also, we had waivers for the Jenga game that was outside the SRS, but that wasn't very popular. A lot of people didn't want to play the Jenga because they had to sign a waiver for it, so it was recommended that we move those. Also, a really big one was that we, we wanted to do a digital scrolling board in which if the programs would run out, people could look at the digital scrolling board and see, hey, there's a presentation at this time, and I want to go see this, or if not, that doesn't interest me, I want to go to this one. So the last one is that we want to distribute a post survey for those who tendered, attended, mentored, and researched, and presented the research at the SRS event to see kind of what we got out of it and how well our research and implementation tactics did. As you can see, throughout all four stages of our campaign, research, planning, implementation, and evaluation, we strive to improve the results of last year's campaign team and to put SRS at the forefront of SDSU students, faculty, and community members' minds so that way SDSU can be on the map as a top research institution. Thank you for your time, and are there any questions?